I was raised Southern Baptist. What I believed is what others practiced. A white church planted in red dirt, a Midwestern boy with a tucked in shirt. I converted not just to Christianity, but to an ideology, an identity, an idea, a theology. I was taught Jesus died for the sins of humanity, that his cross would demolish all hints of inequality, that he cried out for unity in his last prayer at Gethsemane, and that this infallible book would bring all believers to harmony. But across the street were the Nazarenes, and two blocks down were the Catholics, and a mile north a church called Community, and east of that were more Baptists. I had this uncallous thought that if we couldn't have fellowship with those in other fellowships who were taught a little different, then we could at least befriend the Baptists who were baptized for the same reasons and under the same creeds and because of the same tree. But these Baptists weren't like the Baptists in our baptistry, washing away their sin. For though these Baptists shared our beliefs, they did not share our skin. We are born into a separated Sunday morning. The body of Christ is segregated past all warnings. The church looks more like a court and less like a courting. Trading the unified bride for stereotype judgments. The juries are sorting. The blacks from the white, the left from the right, the women from men, the sinners from sin, the traditional from the charismatic, the liberal from the dogmatic, the denomination from the non-denom, inevitably separating us from God. How did we get so far off from the truth that now a poor, dark-skinned, unattractive Israeli Jew would have better luck dying for our sins than fitting in on our pews. Are our views and traditions worth destroying the body of Christ's eternal commission? Baptizing all nations in the damnation of our denomination's fraternal omission? We are omitting the ominous call to depart from the social roles and charts our stratified cultures impart. But it's time our churches look less like the demographic of a country club and more like that of a Walmart. Before the cross, all races and nations fit into two percentiles, God's chosen Israel and the unchosen Gentiles, those who could enter in the temple and those exiled by its walls. But after the cross, the hostility built into that divider did fall. And now a new people are born, a holy nation set apart from all who'd lived before. Within this borderless country, there are no Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, rich nor poor, Democrat nor Republican, Iraqi nor American, holy nor beautiful, polished nor tainted, Catholic nor Baptist, red nor brown black nor white, there is only Christ, the miracle of a true life, the participants in a new creation, the old has gone, the new has saved us, we are the third race, neither Gentile or Jew, from death to life we have all passed through, our skin has not been removed, but our eyes have been renewed, now you can see me and I can see you, as more than a brand, title, sinner or color, but as a father, mother, sister or brother, the church is universal, the university of diversity. She can teach the world how to live in harmony. The church is local, the locale for unity, unifying heaven and earth. We are the contrasted community. Our allegiance is not to a country, color, or creed, but to the androgynous family born on that Roman tree. We will no longer be separated by our prejudices and bigotry, nor be segregated from those who think or look differently, but will embrace our body's beautiful diversity and will raise our voices for peace as God's extraordinary symphony. Sure.